what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven Shout out to Engraven. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs featuring the couch writer Raven himself, Mr. Jermaine Lockett. And what Questions from Subs is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question on any NFL team, player, whatever. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And speaking of them, shout out to all the patrons. And if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Everything is down below in the description. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. One thing before we get into this video, if you have a grudge with somebody, let it go. Let it go. It's, it, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. It's not worth taking up that mental capacity whenever you think about that person. You're like, oh. Let it go. Even if you've let the person go, even if it was over something legitimate, still, let it go. Even if y'all not going to talk again, still, let it, don't hold on, to let it go. And you'll feel so much better. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Next question came from my guy, Brandon P. He said, hey, Engraven and team, keep it clean. How would you feel about the Ravens adding another backfield dog to our already stout running game in Todd Gurley? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, y'all ready for this? Y'all not gonna like me. Y'all not gonna like me. I'm gonna tell you straight up. Like the last two years, Ty Gurley, this dude hasn't even got above four yards, four yards per carry. Not above four yards per carry. Look at our dogs that we got right now in the house, both above five yards per carry. And then there's this guy who keeps getting forgot about, Justice Hill. Justice Hill, y'all. He ain't just a special teamer. This dude has major speed. I'm talking full-on burner-type speed. He can make things happen. And I wish y'all take a look at his college tape. This guy had over 3,500 yards in college. 3,500 yards in college. I'm talking 32 total touchdowns. Dude was a beast in college, and he needs that opportunity to shine here. Shoving a Todd Gurley on top of that, it hurts the cap, and it hurts – it hurts uh, Justice Hill's opportunity to be in Baltimore. He put on Twitter because he thought the writing was on the wall right after the season that he's got to do what he's got to do. And we knew that that meant roster-wise. He thought he wasn't going to be able to see a future in Baltimore. But we want we want Justice Hill in Baltimore. We don't want Todd Gurley in Baltimore. I'll be honest. Yeah, he brings a decent amount of talent, but it does nothing but slow the team down in what they're currently doing. Four running backs doesn't work. We saw it last season. We saw, okay, Ingram was there. That's cute. But at the same time, we knew who she was. And we knew Gus was so consistent that he was like, I'm going to get buried on this death shot. I'm coming out balling. Ingram, why don't you go ahead and take that seat over there? Uh, it's going to be me and JK over here and, and Lamar, of course, leading the way. But to have Lamar, to have Gurley, to have Gus, to have <laughs> to have Dobbins, and then JK on top. I mean, we're talking a stable of five running backs. Like, and we just talked about everybody got to get fed. Well, in that situation, somebody gets left off, but we know it's just it's going to be left off of it. And then it's going to be between Gus and Dobbins. And here we go. We got Gurley added to the situation. It's not going to be a good situation because somebody is going, not going to get fed or not going to get used. And honestly, I think they're going to try to shoot out, try to push out Gus when they don't need to. Gus is that dude. He makes it. He had six, was it six yards of carry last year? And I believe Dobbins had like five. It was above five. I think it's like 5.3, 5.8, something along those lines. Five, uh, uh, yards per carry. We got to be able to use those two one-two punch, of course, with Lamar uh, on undesigned uh, runs and stuff to be able to move the chains and then be able to, on those passing downs, use Justice Hill. He's a great back to be able to uh, involve in the passing game. Of course, you need that bailout route. That's what improved Brady's game. If you looked at the tape uh, on Brady last year, after he lost to Chicago, it seemed like he went into that quarterback's room or went into that offensive coordinator's room and say, hey, look, I need my bailout route. You know, give me that running back who's going to, to do that out route from the backfield just in case I can't get this shot downfield. That's what improved Brady's game through all the time he was in New England. That was the difference. He was able to do the skinny seams in New England and have the running backs do outs in case stuff something wasn't open. And, of course, he had Julian Edelman going across with drags in the slot or slants. 
Well, of course, the game has changed when he went to Tampa Bay because he's got deep ball guys who can catch those 50-50s. If they mm -hmm. ain't there, he needs a bailout route. That's your running backs. Baltimore needs that as well. And that's just his heel. Todd Gurley doesn't fit the equation. He's not a fit for Baltimore. Granted, it's his hometown. Sure, have him sign him a one-day contract. Go ahead and retire. <laughs> Something along those lines. But he is not meant for the Baltimore Ravens. It's just not a match right now. Like, if we trade, you know, if Gus Edwards gets traded and, let's say, you know, EDC pulls a, a rabbit out of his hat like normal and uh, gets some multiple picks or something like that, I'd be heartbroken because I love me some Gus. Love the bus. But if, yeah, one of them got traded, then I'd be like, okay, bring on Gurley. But right now, it just it doesn't, it doesn't fit. All right, next question came from my guy, JP. He said, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing well. Keep the positivity uh, messages coming. They're quite refreshing. Appreciate it, man. Love the videos and look forward to your Ravens 53 roster prediction. Oh, see how he slipped that in there trying to be slick because that's not even his question. He said, my question is, why are wide receivers now staying away from jersey numbers 80 through 89? Looks like Boykin out there lonely with number 80. Kind of missed the Isaac Bruce, Marvin Harrison days and stay blessed. I just, I, it all depends on, I, I can't say receivers are staying away from it, but uh, especially with the new college rule now when they, when they can get those numbers, um, a lot of them had those numbers in college. But as far as the Ravens receivers, uh, one of the reasons I think a lot of them are going to those lower numbers is because all the tight ends are taking up everything. Because we got like 23 tight ends on the team, so they're taking up all those 80 numbers. And, and like Hollywood, where he went to five, well, he was at 15, but so he was never in the 80s conversation. But yeah, Ravens got so many tight ends and they already got them all. So that that's probably why. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's just a fun thing. You know, it's, it's a fun perspective. It's something different. You know, you told me that I couldn't have these numbers for so long and now I can. Or I'm going to figure out a, a different way, just like the touchdown dances. You know, if at one point in time, there was no touchdown celebrations because it's was so no annoying. fun league. And then Goodell say, you know what, y'all hate me so much, I got to give you something. I got to give you something. <laughs> and so he gave them the touchdown dance back. So here it is. He's bringing more fun into the league, allowing them to move their numbers back over to what their college number was as long as they go ahead and buy up the stock of the, the jerseys. They should be right. good to go. I think a majority of them is a point of pride. Like, hey, look, man, I wore five in college. You know, I don't care about, you know, what Joe Flacco wore, whatever. Appreciate, respect, <laughs> and salute for the Super Bowls and stuff. I'm going to rock my five. And it's just like, I, I respect Hollywood for it. Hey, do your thing, you know? Matter, you know matter of fact, if you want to call Joe Flacco and be like, hey, what's up? Hey, you mind? Right, I'm going to do it anyway, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I just wanted to make a phone call just to say I made the phone call. That way people ask, hey, I made the phone call. Whatever. I'm still wearing this jersey them. And Joe's active. You know, he, he's doing this thing over there. I mean, he might end up starting for for the Eagles, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's competition. But Joe's still active. That number should still be used. If we retired every mediocre player's number Ooh. across the – oh, man, I'm sorry. I said that out loud. Okay, I right, look. If we retired oh. every single player that, you know, had, let's say, decent performance for the Baltimore Ravens, we couldn't get enough players on the field during camp is, is what it is. And so I think, yes, depending on Hollywood moving to that number, you know, anybody else who wanted to move to those numbers, whether it be, you know, Queen or Ford or anything like that, it's just a matter of fun. I wouldn't think too much of it because of the fact that they just out there having a blast and I can't wait to see what it looks like. Now, Brady's mad. Brady is like livid over this because he can't tell who's who, you know, if he's got a, <laughs> a daggone defensive tackle wearing a, wearing a single digit number, he's probably sitting there a little hot or if he's where he sees a linebacker, he can't tell if it's a nickel corner, or if it's an actual linebacker coming at him. And so he can't call out the mic. Oh, well, he gonna be he gonna be he gonna be mad. He's just gonna have to adjust to the game, and of course he will. You know he will, or he'll retire. Hopefully, finally. I'm just saying. <laughs> Our next question came from my boy Kevin S. He said, "Love your show, bro. Uh, I'm a Louisville, Kentucky, and watched Lamar Jackson in college. A huge Lamar fan, and love that he's with the Ravens. Perfect fit. Ever since Lamar Jackson has been in the league, he has not been surrounded with weapons like Patrick Mahomes. Lamar won an MVP with less." I don't understand why more national news and Ravens fans are not as excited this year more than any, any other year. He has more weapons than he's ever had, and he's more mature. Why are we not talking about Lamar Jackson as an MVP in 2021? He got the MVP with less talent. Even J.K. is a better running back than Ingram, in my opinion. Thanks. Hmm. Now, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people actually talk about Lamar Jackson as a uh, possible MVP uh, for this season. 
um, especially with what the Ravens have done at the wide receiver position uh, this year. So I, I, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people saying it. Maybe not the national media or anything like yeah. that, uh, but certainly uh, a, a lot of Ravens fans, and not even just Ravens fans, but people who uh, objectively watch Lamar Jackson uh, play. And, and I like the point that you made about uh, Lamar Jackson being even more mature this year, uh, because yeah, he does have. He had his rookie season. He's, su- I mean, he's still super young. But he had his rookie season, and then in his second year, uh, he had he won an MVP, a unanimous MVP. Um, and, and then the, the follow-up for that, despite – it's like it's crazy because with Lamar Jackson, um, his pedestal is like it, it's, it's so high because pe- – and, and the people's expectations for Lamar Jackson, they are, they are extremely high. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's a, he's a victim of his own success. Um, and it's sort of a good problem to have, uh, but at the same time, you know, people just be waiting for them to fall short and what. But anyway, uh, with Lamar Jackson, uh, he this will be his third. This will be his fourth year, excuse me, uh, and his third season as a full time starter. Uh, and the maturity level—that's something that I think me myself I don't talk about enough. Yeah. Uh, but he he'll be that much more comfortable this year. And despite what a lot of people would say, like if you listen to national media, they'll be like, oh, Lamar Jackson, he had a bad year last year. He had a down year last year. But again, you got to think about what, like where do you how do you follow up an MVP season? No matter what you do, it's, 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 the only place to go is down. Yes. Uh, but Lamar, even last year it was not a bad season. And something that, uh, that's that been a trend with Lamar Jackson ever since his rookie year, uh, his touchdown and interception ratio was always really good. Um, and, and we've seen the improvements, the biggest improvement that he made from this rookie season to his – and even till now, because um, his rookie season, you saw this dude losing fumble after fumble after fumble after fumble after fumble after fumble. But that's not – that, that wasn't an issue his MVP year. It wasn't an issue last year. He corrected that. So – um. He's been taking steps forward and mm-hmm. leaving the, the, the issues that he had in the past in the past. Yeah. Um, now, with Lamar Jackson, one of the things that I'm the most excited for this year, and like you talked about earlier when you talked about uh, the repetition, uh, what you do in practice, and then it, it translates to the field if you keep on repeating it in practice. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things I'm looking forward to with Lamar Jackson this year, and hopefully he can be – I don't, I don't even care if he gets regular season MVP. It would be nice – but I, I just want to get a Super Bowl MVP. Yes. But anyway, um, with the uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to with him the most is a deep ball improvement. Mm-hmm. That would do wonders for this team because they they missed a lot of opportunities with that. Sometimes Lamar would overthrow. Sometimes he would underthrow. But with the deep, if they can get that deep ball going and make teams like respect the deep ball. Not mm-hmm. just respect Hollywood, but respect the deep ball, period. If they can get that going, this offense could be on. I mean, it's already on another level, but if they can mm-hmm. add the deep ball to what they already do well, man, <laughs> that thing would be nice. Big facts, I'm telling you. So I think the way, you know, people, they got to stop looking at the MVP stuff because that's just the – that's the shiny new toy, to be honest with you. It, it, the people want what they want in front of their eyes, something new. And Lamar Jackson was that. It was magnificent for the, the season. And, of course, him to lead the league in touchdowns. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But right now, if I had to say who was going to be the MVP for the 2021 season, I got to go with Justin Herbert. The, the, touch, the throw, a touch on the ball. Oh, my gosh. The guy's, the guy's throws are amazing. And I'm not saying Lamar's aren't. I'm just saying this guy, he, he really makes the, the tight throws. He makes the touch throws. He's got everything around him. That he needs to be successful and it's already proven. Baltimore, of course, has these new shiny toys. And like you said, the deep ball is going to improve because they got guys who know how to jump up for that deep ball mm. and Tyler Wallace and Rashad Bateman. They actually go after it, climb the ladder, and get the ball in this apex to come down with it. In fact, they led the league, I want to say in college, they were some of the top performers as far as the uh the the um, uh, jump balls, you know, they they love to be aggressive and going after those big time catches to add Sammy Watkins to that mix and have him to be one of those jump ball type players. It's going to make Lamar's job a little bit easier as far as those passes on the outside. I think, yeah, like you said, the repetition piece is going to be a key part of that. 
But uh, as far as the MVP, it's going to be consistency. You know, can you be that consistent thrower or can you be that consistent playmaker, should I say? Because it's really about the playmakers. It's not necessarily about who can be the best thrower. We saw that when Lamar killed it for the, the MVP season. Yes, he, he scored the, uh, the most touchdowns. But at the same time, it was just the, the crazy plays, like the plays against the Bengals, plays against the Texans. I mean, the highlight reels. How many times can you get on the highlight reel? Pretty much is what it what it was. Like I remember watching him in college and him being able to be on the highlight reel because he was throwing those 50-50 balls on Jalen Smith. Or like when I went to go watch the Mars tape, it reminded so I was just like, okay, his his you know, his highlight reel was nice. But then I went and watched each individual game. And mm-hmm. each individual game was his own highlight reel. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this guy's a freak. That, that, was, that just went 70 yards. Like, this dude is crazy. And it was just off of one little read option. He gets some action like that this year and stacks highlight reel on top of highlight reel and starts to turn it into like what 2019 was and using those receivers getting involved. And that's how you make an MVP. You know, that's that's how you get on the national television. The more national television games we got, the more opportunities that votes will come through because those writers who are the haters right now will then go ahead and flip you know, flip the script. Say, oh, he's amazing. But then you go back and re, you know look at like five months ago. Oh, he can't throw. And I'm like, what are you where are you coming from this? You know, y'all y'all saw this man just won an MVP and now you want to say, Oh, Lamar can't throw. Oh, Lamar can't hit the deep ball. Lamar can hit the deep ball. Is this is up the middle at the at the, this particular time? It's just uh, the ones to the I want to say to the far right, and uh, that's where he, he struggles at. But you can see the ones like the game in against Jacksonville, he was in the deep ball to the left uh, to Hollywood Brown. Uh, the Browns game, the first game of the season, he dropped a dime to uh, Hollywood Brown. He's able to make the throws there. We just got to get more opportunities, and Greg Roman has to be open to listen to Keith Williams as they incorporate that into the passing attack. Like I liked during the, uh, was it the off season during the camps, uh, the mini camps or was it OTAs when they showed the kiss route and they were kissing uh, off each other to, to run that. It was a, uh, it was a chair route, but then it went back out into a post. And I was like, this is phenomenal here. They, they incorporate some of this in. It's going to allow the Lamar to do what he does best and throw that fade. Okay. And you know what? Speaking of Giro, we'll just go ahead and uh, segue into our next question that came from my boy, uh, Manuel. Uh, he said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was listening to your recent question from subscribers that had the question about uh, maybe HR wasn't willing to bring the people to evolve our wide receivers, and that got me thinking. David Culley was our passing coordinator and was helping Greg Roman build the air attack for the, his offense. But could it be that because Lamar is so unique in his talents that even if both Giro and Culley watch Michael Vick, Tyrod Taylor, and other mobile quarterbacks tape in order to create a passing scheme for Lamar, it wasn't working because he is levels beyond those guys. Maybe not on arm strength, but the mobility and speed he has is leagues above what they had in their time that he needs his own passing offensive scheme to evolve. Since Keith Williams and T. Martin can train wide receivers and make them elite and they can see better how they flow with Lamar, maybe it can help Greg Roman be more creative and stop assigning Lamar a Michael Vick's box and create his own. Stay safe and tell Carter to be great at what he wants wants to do when he is big. Appreciate it. So what is the question? (laughs) <laughs> this is a, this is a very interesting one because I mean basically what he's saying is that he feels like G Row and David Culley tried to put Lamar Jackson in a box like like a Michael Vick tried to make him a Michael Vick but he's saying with Keith Williams and T Martin he hopes that they can train the wide receivers make them elite and this can also help Lamar Jackson and they can just develop a passing game for Lamar Jackson and and make him his own guy. Yeah. I, I um I think they're already doing that. Um, but hopefully like this year, they just they they let loose. Like they, they started to last year now. They started to early on last year. Like I remember the first couple of weeks, definitely the first game, definitely against the Browns, definitely that Texans game. Um, where they you you could tell like they told Lamar, hey, throw it. Don't 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 take off, even if you got especially in that Texans game. Because I remember there was a play in the red zone. Lamar dropped back. Nobody was open. He had a lane. He, it was a touchdown if he would have ran. But he just waited, 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 waited. Then he threw it to Hollywood at the back of the end zone, but he overthrew him a little bit. 
Um, but so they, they started to a little bit last year. They started to really let it rip. Uh, but hopefully this year, when they do let it rip, mm -hmm. they like they they take the leashes off. They say, Lamar, go do your thing, man. Yeah. Do your thing. Like go after it, go get it. Mm -hmm. And 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 now he has more receive experience receivers with Sammy Watkins. That I think hopefully he can stay healthy. That's that's the biggest thing. Hope please stay healthy. But um his experience can help a lot. And it can help. Uh, everybody who's underneath Sammy Watkins as well, because again, Sammy Watkins knows what it takes uh, to to win it all. He knows what it takes to get there. He knows what it takes as a team to get there. So mm -hmm. hopefully, he can help uh, the Ravens, especially on offense, with that. Uh, and and like you talked about earlier, uh, with a Rashad Bateman, with a Tylen Wallace, with them really going after those those fifty fifty balls. Maybe Lamar Jackson. This could be a year where he might take some more chances. Uh, Cause I know that that's been a thing with Lamar Jackson too, uh, where he can, he won't really take, unless it's to Hollywood or Mark Andrews, those two. Yeah. But with everybody else, if you're not open, then no, you're not getting the ball thrown your way. Man. Yeah. Um, and hopefully one, one thing that would take Lamar's game to a whole nother level. If he started throwing receivers open mm -hmm. that, Oh boy. If, if he, <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't think that they're. I don't think that Greg Roman and David Culley were doing a thing where they were trying to box him in with Michael Vick or, or Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. I, I just. I don't. I don't think they were doing that. Hopefully they weren't. But this year, I just feel like they could just let him loose. Yeah, here's my thing. I think you know when John Harbaugh when he was applauding uh, the way that Greg Roman ran the offense when Marty was here. Uh, to try and help, you know, save some things. I think Greg took it like, hey, you know, we're doing these great things. Let's continue to do them. But then I think he told Cully, like, during the game planning or to to input the uh, pass part of the attack, he's like, hey, uh, why don't you go sit over there? Just just go sit over there for a while. <laughs> and uh, Cully's like, I got some great ideas. Mm -mm, nah, nah, we're we, we running this thing, and we'll use your basic routes of those flies and those out routes. And that's kind of <laughs> pretty much what we're going to stick to. And then if all else fails, we'll just go ahead and – uh, run an inseam up to Mark Andrews with a jump ball. Sound good? Because he's like, yeah, I guess if that's what you – I mean, you know, that's what you want to do. But I think that uh, Williams and, and Martin are going to have a little bit more of a backbone, and they're going to jump in there. And Harbs is probably going to be right behind him saying, hey, uh, Giro, I'm going to need you to listen, or uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be gone in week seven. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you straight up right now, you need to listen to these guys and incorporate this into your offense or things are going to shake up. They got to listen to how routes are going to be ran. You know, they have to incorporate this new these new schemes because you see it when the Devontae Adams is running his routes. It's nasty. It's, it, and then, of course, they're not just your natural stick routes that you teach in Pee Wee football. An out route, a slant doesn't look like a slant. One thing one of the things I used to look, look at was uh, Stevie Johnson. When he used to run the his the Buffalo Bills, yeah, I think too. Nothing looked like a regular route for him. It it didn't. And he was he, and he actually said it when he was doing his training videos. He was like, "Look, man, you running a slant. The corner don't need to know you running the slant. The quarterback needs to know you running the slant. But you get there how you want to get there." And that when that made so much difference in his routes. Hans Ward, same thing. You didn't know what what Hans was going to run. He was a wildly type receiver or whatever. He didn't run mechanical routes. And these quarterback, uh, these uh, coaches, the wide receiver coaches, are teaching them how to run non-mechanical type routes, and that's what's going to confuse things for these corners. That's what's going to shake up the plays for this offense is non-mechanical type routes. Sure, there's you know slants are going to probably be a little basic or whatever, but the jump step now is something that's getting incorporated in and throwing these corners off because you don't know which way they're going and these hips are getting put wide. As soon as these corners are going wide, then that's when these wide receivers are going to take those opportunities and make things happen big. But that's what these coaches are teaching. And the coaches are going, like he said, those daggone drills, they become the routes. And the routes are going to become the plays. He put it on Twitter straight up. That's how it's going to be. g has got to be able to be humble enough to listen to them, to make it happen. And that's where the Ravens are going to come big. Shout out to Graven.